please briefly summarize your industry education and professional background. So I started um, my engineering background in uh, electromechanical design engineering, and that was back in the 80s, a time when CAD software was not just invented, but it was really because of hardware was taking um, more center stage. And the companies that I was working for started to use it. And I found that I was actually more interested in the tool than what I was doing with the tool. So, um, so my passion has always been not just for engineering, but also for communication and, and learning. So I basically took the path um, of following the technology and I ended up going to work for uh, a company was, um, they hired me to teach a software called CADM and AutoCAD and consult on that. But I learned the software that I, I am basically settled on my life back in 89, which was uh, MicroStation by Bentley. And I went to work for Bentley in 95 and I was um, part of the group that had started the Bentley Institute, which was kind of the learning branch of Bentley Systems. And really that has been um, pretty much my history. I've, I've done in that time, product management, you know, product development, um, did some dabbling in sales, but my passion always came back to um, the software and working with users in that capacity. How would you describe your role as microstation technologist? What does that mean to you? So what that means to me, and you obviously got that from an email that I had sent because um, my, technical tidy, te my technical title at Bentley is a uh, senior consultant, um, but I didn't like that. Uh, I liked microstation technologist. So for me, a uh, technologist is somebody who's immersed in a, any given technology and it's a passion for them in their life. And it did kind of make it more open as a term. So people saw that and they weren't really sure that if I was this or that, so it was more broader of a description of what I did. Um, so for me, it was kind of to demonstrate it was my passion in life um, to be a technology um, evangelist, really. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's not, it's my non-official title at Bentley. So probably got me interest from people, you know, looking at that going, oh, what is that? A microstation technologist. So, so yeah, it was really a title that my boss at the time, I said, that's what I wanted on my business cards. And he said, no, uh, because if you want that, then all the other kids are going to want that too. So, uh, so I had ended up going with that on my business card, but my email signature says microstation technologist. So, because it's what my world is all about, is the software. How would you describe the current state of the infrastructure and AEC industry? It's always been in, in a constant, uh, constant state of flux, in my opinion, because of technology. Technology is, it's, it's very disruptive to long-term plans and infrastructure, whether it's uh, roadway bridges, uh, buildings, power plants, that kind of infrastructure. They're long-term projects, they're long-term investments, and they have to freeze at some point the technology to get going. So I think when you see spurts of growth um, in, in the infrastructure world, and I think the current state is we're ready for another jump, and I think that jump is going to be um, moving away from, and a lot of industries already have done this, but moving away from really kind of just the 2D world. And they may still be designing in 2D but, or 3D, but they're still producing 2D blueprints or uh, you know PDFs, things like that. So I see um, the current state is we're in another transition period and, and transition periods and um, industries can, can last a decade or more or be less than a decade. But I think we're in the transition of moving away from the, the 2D world, whether that's a PDF or a print, to really just um, going from advanced planning in 3D, virtually designing it, sending it out to bid, 
and then having it constructed and then maintained with a 3D model. And th that transition technologically, I think the software and the hardware, that can be there, but then the next challenge is going to be users. And there are a lot of users, as we know that hiring people is very difficult at this time. And a big part of that is that because we boomers are retiring and they're just, you know, the, the millennials and the Zoomers, there's just not as many of them. So, it, uh, but as the boomers retire, that generation will, I think, uh, be there to initiate that next technological advancement, which will be 3D from start to finish. And uh, there's a lot of behavioral changes that'll have to occur in the workforce in order for that to happen. And I think right now, in, in my opinion, in big part, I think the boomers are preventing that from happening because they grew up on the drafting table, they grew up with 2D, they grew up with send out a PDF, send out a print. So, um, so I think the current state right now is we're ready for another jump. And since we have an infrastructure bill, we have an infrastructure that needs help, um, I think they're gonna try and do it smarter and they're gonna have to because they're gonna have a smaller workforce to work with. So uh, that means you know, automation and that means you're gonna have to find those shortcuts. And as they look at that, I think they're gonna be moving to um, you know, virtual design construction or a VDC model. Uh, BIM, BDC, you know, that big thing that nobody understands. So, um, so yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at right now. I think in, in big, big picture is we're getting ready for another shift. So you touched upon some of these things, but I'm kind of wondering about a little bit into the past and the future. How has technology changed the infrastructure industry in the past? And how do you see it affecting the industry's future based on your experiences? Certain industries haven't changed much. Technology had did, had an impact, but not significantly. And I, I would look at civil engineering as an example. There's two major components of it, which would be your roadway design and your bridges. Uh, the roadway, they're now they're working with 3D to do the design, but the end result is still a PDF, two dimensional. So I think that has changed a bit, technology impacted that, so we could create those 2D designs uh, more efficiently. But I think the big shifts had occurred, and I just recall this 30 years ago, where the plant and process, they saw the benefit of using 3D to model. And they were doing that again 30 years ago. And I think bridges, for the most part, uh, as we all know, our bridges, you know, are, are in bad need, for bad, badly in need of repair. Um, I think this is something that uh, I know that companies that I work with, um, they're exploring this heavily of basically doing their bridge design in 3D. So that's where that kind of that leap comes forward. So I think in the past, I think technology, software, hardware, limited uh, uh, what we could do. And then I think going forward now, again, we're getting ready for that next big transition. And I think people are coming in from the, into the workforce, knowing Minecraft and playing Halo and everything like that. So they're, they're better prepared for working in a 3D world. So I think the past mindset transition from a drafting table to an electronic pencil to today, I think 3D is going to be one of the biggest shifts. Uh, and again, it's not new, but for some people, it is. You know, they're going to be challenged by it. And again, that's, I think, a big part of the boomers. What advice or tips could you give our engineering audience that they may not already be doing or encourage some technologies they may not be using? To, to give people advice that, uh, that they don't already know. A again, some people know this, some people don't know this, but as I was speaking that I think the advancement into 3D, I think is going to be, uh, the technology is there, but I think the hardest part for organizations is going to be the users and transitioning them. So it, it's not unknown, but training, education um, is, is gonna be required to help people make that transition. And so I think 
to not forget about training when we're talking about, oh, we have to buy software, we have to buy maybe some new hardware, we have to really change our workflow. Uh, and But in that process, you know, you can change your software, your workflow, you can write up the document for the process, but if people aren't educated or feel comfortable doing it, um, it fails. So I think for a lot of organizations, just don't forget about the educational component and the users. I've seen technology introduced in organizations that somebody at a very high level made a decision. And if they would have consulted with um, the folks who are in the trenches doing it, um, they would have saved themselves a lot of money. Um, I can think of a utility company recently, about 10, 15 years ago, actually. They made a decision to go a direction, um, but they didn't really take into account the impact it would be on the users, and it failed. And they wasted millions of dollars, and they threw it out, and they had to go back to what they were doing before. So again, I think uh, finding champions and incorporating the users into the research and development and uh, deployment of it. So you're winning people over. They feel part of the, the process opposed to being um, the last person in the line getting whatever's left. So, so as far as, yeah, a tip to people, I would say um, embrace change. Uh, it is constant. Um, have an open mind to technology. And I think if there's parents out there, if their child is playing Minecraft, um, don't stress too much about it because that is preparing them in a way for modeling in 3D and also the logic that comes along with those programs. It is their world. Uh, it will it is, and it will be their world. It may not be their parents' world, and they may not understand it. But so I, that would be my advice: is to um, balance it, find the balance with your with your kids, and then also for companies, you know, look for those kids. Um, one thing I'm still not entirely sure what what exactly you do. Can you give me an example <laughs> of of some consulting that that you're working on, perhaps a, a project and and something that that you can describe what it is you're focusing on right now? Really, for the last 15 years uh, at, at Bentley Systems, I've been in, embedded with Caltrans. So um, I do all of their training and consulting with them for um, all of their engineers um, for using of MicroStation in the situation and also their visualization and introducing them into um, Technologies at Bentley, like you know, um, our context capture, basically, which is the um, ideally, you take a drone, you fly it, you take the pictures. From that, you can build a three D model that can be used then uh, during the design phase. So, so that would be, I think, probably would be education of a very specific client. I've been, let's say, ninety nine percent of my time is, I'm really almost like a Caltrans employee in that way because I'm immersed with them. So um, it is to help them not only handle what they're doing today and to utilize their products, um, but also is to look around the corner and to see what is already available to them and how can they integrate that to improve their efficiencies and their workflow. So, so as far as um, it, no specific project, but um, I think probably one of the more recent things that, um, that I was doing was getting their Caltrans kind of introduced to the 3D modeling, um, doing the flying their drones and things like that. So I would be spending time in the districts talking with their survey groups. Um, so I think promoting that technology. And now, I mean, Caltrans has, you know, a directive and they've got probably thousands of um, UAV pilots who are certified. So, so that's uh, as far as a technology. That's been one of my big passions. It's been a lot of fun. So, I'm a, a I'm a pilot, not a drone pilot, but I'm, I'm a pilot, and I'm I have a drone and I've flown and done probably over fifty different um, virtual models. So, just some uh, all basically to highlight the product. So, everything from my house to um, bridges and structures and things like that to help to illustrate to Caltrans how it could be used within their environment. 